Okay, this is a 2004 Honda CRV uh, automatic transmission with the 2.4 liter engine. As you're probably already aware, this particular car likes to explode air conditioning compressors. So for us, this is air conditioner number three. And Honda covered the first one 100%. Two years later, boom, again, Honda covered it 50%. And now the bearings went out on this particular compressor and was making a very loud and awkward noise. And I thought, well, we should probably change it before it destroys the entire system. So I thought I would share with you a little bit of information on about how to get this guy out of here and it's really not that difficult so to begin you're going to want to take off these plastic pieces here you have your grill and this top piece here and the splash guard underneath and these actually go up underneath the wind fender wells and your front bumper fascia So the bumper and the grill come off as one piece. That top plastic piece goes right across here and it's held in place with a whole bunch, about eight or so, of these little Honda push pins. And they pretty much get destroyed, especially underneath when you go to take them out. So I just ordered uh, like 40 of them off Amazon for seven bucks or something so anyways so number one take off your negative terminal there uh, pop out all those pins on the top and it just it just slides right out from here that that top piece there to get the bumper off you're gonna have two eight millimeter bolts that are right up inside of here which is basically you know, right inside the fender well and then there's a 10 millimeter here a 10 millimeter here and then again another 8 millimeter up in here then the bottom splash guard comes off before you disconnect the fascia it's a little bit easier that way I don't know, there's about 15 more of those Honda push pin plastic clips in the bottom of the bumper and in that bottom splash guard. So I took that bottom splash guard off first, took out all those other pins, pulled the front uh, bumper fascia off. I did notice in another YouTube video that you don't have to remove the grill when you take off the bumper fascia. But I, I did it beforehand, but only because I didn't know any better. But I've seen other YouTube videos where they take the whole thing off together. And I understand why, because it was kind of a pain to reach back under there with a screwdriver to get those little clips out. So, Anyways, once you get all that stuff open, you're going to have your condenser in the front and your radiator in the back. So to get your radiator out and it does have to come out. Um, you're going to have four of these brackets. I marked these left and right, so let's see here. Bracket goes in, 10 millimeter bolt here on top, and 10 millimeter bolt right here goes in the side of the radiator. And again, you have one 10 millimeter bolt right here that holds the condenser in here and same thing over here got your condenser bolt and your radiator bolt and then up here is your radiator bolt oh one thing I forgot to to get that plastic uh, shield off of the top here you're gonna have to take out your battery bracket uh, momentarily to get back inside of there okay now once you get to this point um, my system was already evacuated before doing this, so you can either 
take it in beforehand, have it evacuated, um, unless you've had some sort of major condenser failure or line failure and your uh, R134 has already escaped. But before you disconnect any of your air conditioning lines, it's, the system's under extreme pressure. Um, so I just forewarn you there to have that have that done. Um, anyways, once you get that far, then uh, you're going to come in here and use a 14 millimeter box end wrench. It's really really hard to see down inside of there, but. Um, I don't know if we can get it in there. Just in front of the power steering pump pulley, you can barely see down there, right, right below the nut. You can kind of see the shiny head of the tensioner pulley down there, and it's it's a real tricky monkey to get that down in there. But I found that using um, a uh, what you call it, half inch breaker bar and a fairly long 14 millimeter wrench. Um, I tried it first with the short one and didn't have so much luck but the longer one it was a little bit easier and with the with the offset that helps you to get it in there and then um, go ahead and slip the half inch uh, breaker bar into the open end of this wrench. Push it toward the rear of the car and that releases the tension and you just kind of peel this belt off here then your uh, your belt is off and out of the way. So back to the radiator and condenser part. Now you've had your system evacuated. Uh, you've got your brackets off. You disconnect your high pressure and low pressure lines. And I just was very very careful because my this particular compressor did not implode. So I do not have uh, shrapnel all up inside my system. So I just made sure to be very careful to clean all the fittings off before I removed them and then I zip tied them up with some Ziploc bags to make sure that no contamination got into the system. Um, so you've got your high pressure and your low pressure. Your low pressure is on, or I'm sorry, high pressure is on this side down below and it too is a 10 millimeter and I got to it through the side right there. You can kind of see the back side of it right there and took that little guy out took the other one off and lifted the condenser right out and here she is um, you can kind of see right here these rubber bushings on the on the bottom here um, sits right down inside of these holes on either side now you've got that out of the way condensers out of the way so the next thing we remove is the radiator. Uh, I went underneath and disconnected my coolant hose on, actually I did the coolant hose on the top first and then went underneath and disconnected the clamp. But it's easier to take the hose off once you get the radiator tilted forward a little bit. So just take the clamp off and if you have an automatic transmission you'll want to remove your uh, transmission oil cooler lines because they that it's built into the radiator and remove both of those and I again I just bagged them up to keep any sort of contaminants out and then what you're going to need to do is remove this coolant bottle coolant bottle is held in place by one 10 millimeter bolt on top and then it's kind of clipped in right here on the bottom of the radiator shroud right here or on the fan there's a little clip in it once when this is in the car you just want to clip that out and that whole bottle will slide right out then there are two 10 millimeter bolts in the top of this fan and you take those out disconnect your wiring harness it's real easy you just pinch and pull comes right out and then these particular fans they just uh, drop, drop right in. So you can see there's some, some holes right there, or nubs. There's a, a hole down here on the bottom. I can do this here. Just fits right in. 
and then uh, here's your 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter here. So this will be on the card. You're going to lift this guy out. Um, then this radiator is going to lean forward for you. It'll, it'll just kind of tilt forward. Once you got it tilted forward, you can reach your hand down in there and wiggle that hose off, that bottom radiator hose. I also made sure to have a good size catch bin uh, to drain that off beforehand with the pepcock and then I just kept it under there to, to keep that coolant so um, hopefully going to I don't know if I'll recycle it but I'll definitely have to take it in and uh, dispose of it accordingly so radiator once you have all your connections and again these just uh, these little push clips right here on the top are real easy you just kind of pull them, pull them right out there's one on each side for the fan then there are two down below one of them is for the pressure switch the temperature switch rather and then the other one is actually the uh, the plug-in for your AC condenser or your compressor disconnect all those and your radiator will f fall forward and you just lift it right out and there she is you do not have to take off the driver's side uh, cooling fan. Now you have a really really open access. At this point too, you know, I've heard there's issues getting to the starter on this car and people tearing apart the whole top end of the motor. I don't know if it would be... I, I think once you've done this once it'd be a lot easier to get to your starter because you got one bolt here and then there's one kind of on the back side of it. It looks like you could get a ratchet in here so I digress. Uh, now, uh, for this compressor. So if you'll notice on the, on the compressor, there's a little lip right here sticking off on both sides. And what that guy does is it hangs right inside of these little things here. There's some C channels and it hangs in it. You got two bolts on the top and two bolts on the bottom. Now when you go to the bottom, you're going to notice that there is very, very little room to get out that bottom bolt. On the passenger side, the driver's side lower bolt's not too bad, but I don't know if you can see it or not, but here's, here's where it goes in, right here, and that literally you can barely see, but the, my finger width apart to get it in there, I was able to get a box end wrench up in there to crack it loose and you know you just gotta be very patient and just slowly work it out when you get out toward the very end I ended up using a, a pair of needle nose pliers to turn it because you really can't get your fingers up there or anything but um, I left one bolt snug on the bottom while I got this one uh, on the passenger side lower out and then um, once that bolt is loose it's not going to fall out of there but you take you take the whole thing out in one piece you can see here's that bolt I was talking about right here um, yeah it's kind of a booger but anyways and then that compressor's out so here you have it I found the compressor on Amazon um, United uh, Air Conditioning or something, I don't know. 150, 160, good reviews, so we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll do an update at some point down the road with that. But, um, that's pretty much it. Now that I have this compressor out, we will uh, be patient and wait for the new one to come in the mail. So I hope that helps somebody's somebody out. I want to say a quick thank you to uh, Carl Rogers. He posted a video on a 2003 CRV AC replacement and was gracious enough to reply right away. He posted the video like four years ago. But um, yeah, it does not look like there's enough room to get that bolt out down there and you kind of feel like you're in a jam. But he, he says, yeah, it'll come out, and I'm here to tell you that it will come out. You just have to take it out with the, the compressor all in one piece. And then, of course, when you put it back in, make sure you have those bottom two bolts 
in the holes before you hang it back on top of here so with that being said I hope that helps somebody else out with um, doing one of these jobs I think that between the compress the cost of the compressor the new filter for the accumulator dryer on this particular model all of the different I got a whole bunch of new pins or plastic clips or what have you. I think I was right around $200 for that. And I also went ahead and ordered a belt and a tensioner and some other stuff too while I have this thing torn apart. But um, last quote I got from the mechanic was $1,300 to do this job. And I'd say for probably $350. Um, you can more than do it because I, I also went ahead and ordered the uh, manifold valves and a vacuum pump so I can evacuate the system and recharge it properly and when you do that there's plenty of videos on how to do that I live in North Dakota so it's completely okay to do that here you may not be able to do it in other states but your information for doing the recharges can't see it because of the glare but tells you right there how much uh, R134 you can put into this car I think the this particular model calls for 18 max uh, 16 minimum uh, ounces of Freon or R134A as they say make sure you use PAG uh, PAG 40 oil and from my understanding the compressor that I ordered comes pre-filled but if it for some reason doesn't have the oil in it then we'll cross that bridge when it comes so I hope that helps again and if you have any questions go ahead and put them in the comment area and I will be happy to help as much as possible God bless you and have fun